SpaceX is moving closer to Starship Flight 12, with both the ship and booster assembled and approaching the final phase before ground testing. Recent activity, however, suggests the company is prioritizing caution over speed as it introduces next-generation hardware. The Flight 12 upper stage, Ship 39, was fully stacked in November, and final hardware installations required for cryogenic proof testing were completed last month, placing the vehicle on a near-term testing path. Since then, large sections of the ship have been covered with scaffolding, and visible progress has slowed, pointing to a likely delay in the cryogenic test campaign. Ship 39 is the first Block 3 starship, incorporating new structural and thermal protection upgrades. The scaffolding likely reflects additional inspections or verification work before cryogenic testing, consistent with a more conservative approach for a first-of-its-kind vehicle. Whether this results in a short delay or a longer pause remains unclear. Meanwhile, ground infrastructure is quietly moving into position. The cryo test stand for Ship 39 arrived at the Sanchez site about three weeks ago and has since been modified to support Block 3 testing. Several systems are being adjusted or replaced, with the stand expected to be ready by the time the ship clears inspections and modifications. On the booster side, progress has been faster. Super Heavy Booster 19 was stacked in a record 28 days and is now being prepared for cryogenic proof testing. However, this campaign includes an additional safety step that did not exist earlier. Before installation, all composite overwrapped pressure vessels for Booster 19 are being individually proof-tested at Massey's under flight-like conditions. COPVs have been transported in batches for testing and returned after validation, a direct response to the Booster 18 COPV failure that caused a destructive explosion during testing. Individual COPV validation enables early detection of manufacturing defects, tighter pressure margin control, and reduced failure risk. The trade-off is time, as this added COPV verification step pushes Booster 19's cryogenic testing later than usual relative to stacking. Overall, the trend is clear. SpaceX is no longer pushing vehicles directly into testing based on schedule pressure alone. Instead, it is absorbing time upfront to validate structures and pressure systems before high-risk tests. While this slows visible progress, it reflects a more disciplined and failure-resistant engineering approach. These delays are affecting the long-term future of Starship as well. In a recent conversation with entrepreneur and engineer Peter H. Diamandis, Elon Musk said SpaceX is now unlikely to attempt an uncrewed Mars mission in 2026, marking a shift from his earlier optimism. He described a 2026 attempt as low probability and potentially distracting, signaling a more cautious near-term Mars strategy. Are you shooting for a Mars shot by the end of next year? <sighs> we could, but... Uh, it, it would be a low probability ah. shot um, and somewhat of a distraction. This contrasts with Musk's statements from May last year when he gave SpaceX a 50% chance of being ready for the 2026 Mars launch window and suggested that successful uncrewed missions could enable crewed Mars flights as early as 2028. The shift reflects mounting schedule pressure around a single critical capability, orbital refueling, which is required to refuel Starship in Earth orbit before any deep space mission. The orbital refueling demonstration was previously targeted for June this year, according to reports released last November. Ongoing delays in Starship flight testing at Starbase have since pushed that milestone back, with Musk now indicating refueling may not occur until late this year. How early in the year are you going to hit orbital refueling, you think, with Starship? Uh, not that early in the year, I'd say, towards, towards the end of the year. The delay affects more than Mars ambitions. It directly impacts NASA's Artemis program. SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System is the primary lunar lander for Artemis 3, the mission intended to return astronauts to the lunar surface. The mission architecture requires Starship to be refueled in orbit before traveling to lunar orbit, meaning orbital refueling must be demonstrated before a crewed lunar mission can proceed and it must also precede an uncrewed lunar landing of Starship. With refueling demo now expected no earlier than late this year, the uncrewed lunar landing is likely to slip as well. That makes a delay of Artemis 3 into 2028 increasingly likely, rather than its current mid-2027 target. The challenge is not conceptual, but practical. Transferring large volumes of super-chilled propellants in microgravity requires precise thermal control, fluid management, and stable docking. A failure during refueling would demand extensive investigation and redesign, making SpaceX's usual rapid test, fail, fix approach far less acceptable in orbit. So, the takeaway is clear. Orbital refueling is the bottleneck, 
for Mars missions, for lunar landings, and for SpaceX's broader deep space ambitions. SpaceX is now proceeding step by step to reduce risk, even if that results in delays. Until orbital refueling is proven in orbit, mission timelines will remain fluid, regardless of how quickly Starship hardware advances on the ground. Turning back to Starbase, work at Launchpad 2 continues steadily as SpaceX pushes its ground systems toward operational readiness. The orbital launch mount is now largely complete, with only a few critical components left to install. The primary remaining hardware, the protective access doors for the 20 booster hold-down clamp arms, has begun installation. These doors close immediately after liftoff to shield the clamp mechanisms from engine exhaust, debris, and extreme thermal loads during ignition. As of this update, 15 of the 20 doors have been installed, with the remaining units expected to follow shortly. Major progress has also been made on the ship quick disconnect arm on the launch tower. Over the past several weeks, the arm's extension piece was under assembly at the Sanchez site, where crews structurally integrated the extension and installed all required fluid lines, electrical wiring, and control systems. These systems supply propellants, pressurant gases, electrical power, and data to the upper stage prior to liftoff. After completing pre-fitting and system integration, the extension was transported to the launch site early Tuesday morning. Within hours of arrival, it was lifted by crane and mated to the existing SQD arm on the tower. Teams are now connecting the fluid, electrical, and control system interfaces between the arm and the extension, forming continuous supply paths from the tower to the spacecraft. Additional work is progressing on the tower arms, where crews are installing supplementary bumper structures. These are designed to prevent direct contact between the arm ends and the vehicle during final translation before capture, reducing impact risk during landing operations. Adjustments to the arm's hydraulic actuation mechanism are also underway, and in parallel, the arms are being put through horizontal movement tests to verify the upgrades. Two major test activities took place at Massey's test site over the past week, both tied to Block 3 design validation. The first involved a two-ring stainless steel section representing the aft skirt of a Block 3 Starship. On January 2nd, the ring was placed atop the integrated hot stage ring of Test Tank 19. Test Tank 19 incorporates Block 3 booster forward section upgrades and has already completed eight cryogenic proof tests since last September to validate those changes. Although initially interpreted as preparation for an integrated structural test, the stacking operation was limited to a fit check. The ring was removed Tuesday afternoon after alignment verification. This check confirmed geometric compatibility, load transfer interfaces, and clamp alignment between the ship's aft structure and the integrated hot stage ring. Performing this fit check at the test site ensures proper seating and clamping, reducing interface issues during stacking a full Starship on an integrated Block 3 booster at the launch pad. The second activity involved Test Tank 17, representing the aft section of the Block 3 Super Heavy booster, built to validate structural upgrades in the booster's lower region. Last week marked its 13th and 14th cryogenic proof tests, making it the most extensively tested structural tank in Starbase history. This prolonged campaign reflects SpaceX's emphasis on structural margin validation and durability before advancing these upgrades to flight hardware. Detailed breakdowns of the design features and test objectives for Test Tank 17 and 19 are covered in earlier videos linked in the description. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Congress just slammed the door on President Trump's massive NASA budget cuts, proposing a whopping $24.4 billion lifeline for the agency instead. In early 2025, the White House directed the Office of Management and Budget to draft NASA's 2026 budget with a strong emphasis on human space exploration, paired with major reductions to science programs. The proposal requested $18.8 billion for NASA overall, a roughly 24% cut from the 2025 enacted level of about $25.4 billion, and allocated just $3.9 billion to the Science Mission Directorate, representing nearly a 50% reduction from the previous year. The cuts targeted planetary science, earth science, heliophysics, and astrophysics, placing more than 50 active and planned missions at risk of cancellation, delay, or defunding. In contrast, human exploration funding was largely preserved, with approximately $7.6 billion allocated to Artemis-related efforts, including the Space Launch System, Orion spacecraft, lunar infrastructure, and continued Starship development under NASA's Human Landing System contract. Overall, 
the proposal prioritized moon return architecture at the expense of scientific research. The response was immediate. Scientists, space advocacy groups, and bipartisan members of Congress warned that the cuts would undermine decades of investment, disrupt international partnerships, and weaken U.S. leadership in space science. As negotiations continued through 2025, Congress moved to block the proposed reductions, maintaining interim funding that prevented immediate mission cancellations. By the end of the year, lawmakers from both chambers aligned to reject the White House request outright. The final agreement, reached on January 5th, proposes $24.4 billion for NASA in fiscal year 2026, roughly in line with the previous year's budget. Science funding would rise to $7.25 billion, just 1.1% below the 2025 budget, instead of the nearly 50% reduction originally proposed. This outcome preserves most missions that had faced cancellation or delay, while fully supporting Artemis and NASA's education programs, but with one major exception. Despite the restored science budget, the compromise spending bill explicitly does not support the existing Mars sample return program. The decision leaves dozens of rock cores collected by the Perseverance rover stranded on Mars, despite their growing scientific value. The cancellation is not driven by a lack of funding, but by cost and programmatic risk. Sample return missions projected cost ballooned to roughly $11 billion by 2024, raising concerns it would consume a disproportionate share of NASA's science budget. Although NASA proposed a redesigned architecture in early 2025 that reduced the estimate to about $7 billion, lawmakers concluded the mission still placed unacceptable pressure on other science programs. Instead of continuing the sample return program, Congress redirected $110 million into a new Mars Future Missions line to preserve key technologies developed under the program, including Mars entry, descent, and landing systems. This keeps the door open for a future reset but the original Mars sample return mission, as planned, is now effectively dead. The decision also carries international consequences. The mission was a joint effort with the European Space Agency, which had been developing an Earth return orbiter to bring the samples home. With the U.S. stepping back, ESA may repurpose the spacecraft for independent Mars science, complicating any future NASA effort to recover the samples. The outcome highlights a clear shift in NASA's priorities. While Congress has chosen to sustain NASA as both a science-driven and exploration-focused agency, not every flagship mission will survive. In the case of Mars sample return, cost growth and strategic risk ultimately outweighed even strong scientific consensus. NASA is considering an early return of the Crew-11 astronauts from the International Space Station, following a medical issue affecting one crew member. The situation emerged during preparations for a scheduled spacewalk by NASA astronauts Zena Cardman and Mike Finke, which was set for January 8th. The EVA was planned to last about 6.5 hours and focused on installing hardware to prepare the station for upgraded rollout solar arrays, a key step in boosting the ISS power capacity. However, on the afternoon of January 7th, NASA postponed the spacewalk after identifying a medical concern. The condition was described as stable, but requiring close monitoring, prompting the agency to prioritize crew health and cancel the EVA. NASA officials confirmed they are actively managing the situation, but declined to share medical details, citing crew privacy. They emphasized that astronaut safety remains the agency's top priority and said updates, including possible rescheduling of the spacewalk, will be provided once the situation is clearer. In parallel, reports indicate NASA is evaluating an early return of the entire Crew-11 mission to address the medical issue. Crew-11 launched on August 1st last year aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon for what was expected to be a standard long-duration mission, with a planned return in mid-February after Crew-12's arrival. While no revised return date has been confirmed, discussions suggest preparations for an expedited departure may already be underway. If executed, this would be a rare case, as ISS missions have not historically been shortened solely due to medical concerns. NASA has stated that further details will be released through official updates as the situation develops. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.